it comes to creating all-time teams, there are so many different ways you can go about it. Do you go for all-time greats or all-time underdogs or the worst team possible? But one thing that I don't think has been done when it comes to the Philadelphia Eagles is the all-time draft team. Just a team using nothing but players who have been drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, Howie Roseman has come under some stick in his time with the Eagles as someone that is a little bit hit and miss when it comes to the NFL draft. But how well have the Eagles drafted since their inception in 1933? That's what we're going to be taking a look at today, guys, in today's video for Sunday Fun Day! If you are new to this channel or you haven't yet hit that subscribe button and you enjoy this content, it would mean a lot if you could take a couple seconds to hit that big red button and join our community. We are so close to hitting that 20,000 mark. This is your last chance to join the 20k club and then we're going to work on some really exciting things to bring this community together. I hope you're all staying safe out there in such an emotional time. If there is anything we can do, do let us know. We are working on some charity events and streams as we speak to try and raise some money for some charities such as the Philadelphia Bail Fund. And as always, don't forget you can get your daily dose of Philadelphia sports coverage from myself and all of our writers at phillysportsnetwork.com. We want to be your new home for Philadelphia sports news and if you're not already visiting the website, hopefully we can give you a reason to at least once or twice a day. Now a couple of rules before we start that may sound obvious, but number one, the players have to have been drafted by the Eagles. So no supplemental picks, no trades, no free agency signings, no undrafted free agents, just pure draft picks. And the second rule is that we're constructing this in the vein of a 53-man roster. So we're going for the whole shebang. We're going starters, backups, the entire roster. So it's not just one guy at each spot. Now that's out of the way, let's dive into it. Let's start with the most important position on the team, it's quarterback. And this is very difficult because there have been so many good quarterbacks drafted by the Eagles. They are a quarterback factory after all, but the three I've gone with here are Carson Wentz, Randall Cunningham, and Donovan McNabb. This might be the hardest decision to make because you have three franchise QBs from three very different eras of Eagles football. You can make pros and cons for each as well, which really doesn't help make this easier. From Randall Cunningham's disappointing playoff record to McNabb's painful battle for ego and to Wentz's, oh, do you know what, I'm not even going to bother opening up the injury argument because I'm, I'm talking to a brick wall. For me, Donovan McNabb isn't the leader I'd want running point in the locker room. And while Cunningham was a human joystick, Wentz's completion percentages and flat out absurd stats and accuracy just push him a tad higher if we were drafting a team to compete in today's NFL. Cunningham may have ended a 12-year playoff drought, but Wentz guided his team to a decimating 2017 season, an MVP-level season, that allowed Foles to go on and win it all. It's really close between them, but honestly, and I promise it's not recency bias, I'd go with Carson Wentz because of how much he's achieved in the face of adversity with such a lack of help as Randall Cunningham did. The difference is that Wentz, in my opinion, is more of a complete package. He gives you that excellence at the quarterback position. But again, it is really tight. So what I may do here is just allow one massive training camp competition to decide who's going to be the QB1. Hopefully Donovan McNabb doesn't win that though because it might get messy. On to running back, we've got Brian Westbrook, Shady McCoy, Wilbert Montgomery and Juice Staley. This backfield would be terrifying in today's NFL and I wanted so badly to include Miles Sanders because just imagine the damage that would do but we have to play it safe here and Sanders has only had one year in the NFL. Juice Staley for me is the perfect fit behind the combination of Westbrook and McCoy, of course two players who overlapped in McCoy's rookie season and who could overlook Montgomery's back-to-back -back Pro Bowls and the fact that he was oh, the Brian Westbrook of his time. The man had 2012 all-purpose yards in 1979, a feat that would still raise eyebrows today. Just ask Christian McCaffrey and look at what he's doing. So this backfield, under Doug Peterson's guidance, would be absolutely sensual. I'd be all for it. The offensive line is a bit of an annoying one because there's no Jason Peters, there's no Todd Harriman's two guys who obviously will be contenders for a team of this nature otherwise. But Lane Johnson, Jason Kelsey, Tra Thomas, Bob Brown, of course, who's a Hall of Famer who spent five years with the team. 
And centre Guy Morris spent 10 years in Philadelphia starting all 16 games on five occasions. So that's the perfect backup to Jason Kelsey. The wild card here is Bob Kuschenberg, who never actually played a snap for the Eagles. He quit after training camp, joined the Continental Football League before returning to the NFL and earning six Pro Bowls. Great. This group is about as good as you could ask for in terms of depth, and having two elite tackles at either side of the bookshelf with an elite centre in the middle is a great way to build. Tight end in this one was kind of difficult because there were some really good tight ends throughout Eagles history, but none have been as dominant as Zach Ertz. Few will be remembered the way that Brent Selleck will be, and there's only one Keith Jackson who won the NFC Rookie of the Year award with the Eagles after enjoying a year that would take over 20 seasons to break, and Deshaun Jackson would be that man much later on. So this tight end group, having all three of them in the same position, is absolutely amazing. To have Zach Ertz be able to carve through the field with that receiving dominance, partnered in a similar skill set by Keith Jackson, allows Brent Selleck to be that blocking tight end and that formidable force at the end of the offensive line. Wide receiver and what a group. I was so, so close to including Jeremy Macklin or Jordan Matthews here over a name like Calvin Williams, but Williams was drafted in 1990, broke the team's single season touchdown record as a rookie and led the team in scoring receptions on four separate years. There's some real receiving pedigree here. You've got Deshaun Jackson and Harold Carmichael, Mike Quick and Fred Barnett. I mean, there are four receivers who you'd be terrified to face on any given Sunday and I absolutely love that. But I wonder who will be featured on this list a decade from now. Could we see someone like a Jalen Rager sneak? onto it after his rookie year begins this year. So 10 years from now, would this list at receiver be much different? On to defensive tackle, Fletcher Cox, Jerome Brown, Charlie Simpson, Corey Simon. Another elite positional group here. I mean, imagine a world where Fletcher Cox and Jerome Brown grace the field at the same time. Is that not the ultimate pairing? I mean, for instance, Jerome Brown was the man who facilitated the explosion of Reggie White. The Eagles have been craving someone of that caliber and they've tried guys like Timmy Jernigan but haven't been able to find that true defensive tackle. The two combined for over 70 sacks in their careers. Charlie Johnson meanwhile had three back-to-back -back Pro Bowl years and Corey Simon eventually won a Super Bowl away from Philly after helping the Eagles to four NFC Championship games in six years he spent with the team. So this is a very, very stout unit. Defensive end and this one really, really hurts because we can't include Reggie White. He was selected by the team in the supplemental draft, but in his place, we've got Brandon Graham, Trent Cole, Clyde Simmons, Kyle Hairston, Dennis Harrison, and Derek Burgess. Now, I know it hurts not having Reggie White, but Clyde Simmons had a 19 sack season. 19! Are we forgetting a 19 sack season? And it's not even like that was a fluke. The guy had two more 13 plus sack seasons during his time with the Eagles alone. This isn't factoring in Trent Cole being an absolute monster and having him alongside someone who was given so much to this team like Brandon Graham feels only right. This is another remarkable position group. Linebacker Seth Joyner and Jeremiah Trotter teaming up with a Hall of Famer in Maxi Bourne. This unit is nasty. William Thomas is often a forgotten hero who made back-to-back -back pro roles for the Eagles in the mid-90s. And it was tempting, it was tempting to include Jordan Hicks here, but I don't think he lives up to the pedigree of someone like Jerry Robinson. This unit is, again, terrifyingly good. I mean, Joyner, Trotter, and Maxi. Oh, imagine that. Imagine being an offense and seeing those three at the Sam, Mike, and Will spots. You wouldn't know what to do with yourself if you're running the ball. Cornerback, and it's the only unit that doesn't fill me with the same confidence that the other groups do on this defense. Don't get me wrong, Leto and Sheldon are a dream duo without a doubt, and Bobby Taylor's nine-year stint with the team has to be commended. This is a very, very solid group of players who represent secondaries that weren't being burned alive every week, and at the end of the day, that's good enough for me, because with those guys in front of them, they don't have to be generationally gifted players, and I think, in a way, this is the only position on the entire team where the Eagles haven't had a player of that level, and they still haven't now. You look at the players they're bringing through, through and the assets they've invested. Corn has always been a position they've struggled with to find those stars and to maintain those stars and develop them. 
But Leto and Sheldon really do represent, I think, the last of that breed of cornerback that the Eagles have struggled to find ever since. So a slightly different note there, but one worth mentioning nonetheless. Safety, Eric Allen, Brian Dawkins, this is the one. Imagine those guys being backed up by one of the most underrated safeties of this generation, in my opinion, in the way of Kurt Coleman. The work he has done since fleeing the nest has been amazing. I think he doesn't get enough credit for it, and I know it's a bit of a hot take to put him into an all-time Eagles draft team. Randy Logan spent 11 seasons with the Eagles, and you add all of that together, it is just a mean, green, hard-hitting machine. And then there's Jerry Norton, okay, who also enjoyed two Pro Bowls with the Eagles, and took snaps at running back. At running back. It's an amazing position. I'm in love with that. Imagine the damage that would do. Special teams was always going to be a little bit different, but there's no way you can't include David Akers here, who beats out Tony Franklin because of the way he played for the Eagles for so long. He's a five-time pro bowler and shattered just about every kicking record there ever is ever for the team. Uh, Max Runeger punted for the Eagles during the 1980 Super Bowl team. And do you know what? John Dorenbos wasn't drafted by the Eagles, but what long snapper actually is. He's a majority and cast a spell to get on this list and that's how he makes it all right but what do you think about the all draft team who would make yours and who wouldn't from this list let me know down in the comments guys as always thank you so much for taking time out of your week to watch this video it means a lot you can make sure to subscribe down below for daily eagles coverage and we'll see you soon